Welcome to another Rocky Mountain Monday where we explore a different part of the Colorado Rockies. Today we're headed to Georgetown and Silver Plume, two towns that are off of Route 6 or I-70. So before I get on I-70, we'll talk a little bit about Georgetown. Georgetown, like the others nearby, including Idaho Springs, was founded as part of the gold rush in 1859. But the reason it's a different type of town, both of them, Georgetown and Silver Plume, is that they weren't really about the gold as much as they were about the silver and the silver boom that occurred later in the 1860s all the way to the 1890s. So the silver boom is what made this town popular and it had to do with some of the local government's push for silver in those mid to late 1800s. So Georgetown boomed, similar to Idaho Springs, somewhere around 10,000 population at its peak. It is now down to 1,000 in population. However, due to its historic nature, it is the county seat of Clear Creek County. What's cool is that Silver Plume is very close by, so that's why they're coupled together today. You can essentially throw a stone and you can hit Silver Plume. And so one of the unique features of these two towns is that you have a little railway that connects the two. It's one of the first tourist attractions in Colorado, also founded late 1800s. So very unique feature where you can ride. It's up 600 feet and you can go around a three mile loop. It's the Georgetown Loop. Georgetown also has offshoots into tons of different hikes. It's also closer to some of the ski resorts, like the Loveland Ski Resort. You start to get even higher in elevation very rapidly from Idaho Springs. Idaho Springs, 8,500 feet. Georgetown, 9,500 feet. Also similar to other towns, you have the creek that runs through, Clear Creek. They're also wedged in between several mountains, which adds to the aesthetic of the region. We have more rafting today. Here we are in I-70, so I'll see you all in Georgetown. Here we are, Georgetown. I mean, the way this is situated between the mountains is just immaculate. To me, this is much more scenic than Idaho Springs. Just the way the formations are laid out. It feels more vast and expansive. Really good greenery all around here as well. Here's the well-known sign that greets you. Well, historic Georgetown. A little bit of rough road entering though. Got your fire department. As the county seat, it must have some of those amenities. There's also a rest stop when we came in in case people need a recharge before they head onward. Here's more of your business district up here. Got some cool artifacts there. And the post office, old school tiny post office, very cool. The gallery, your tea place. Very historical buildings. You can only imagine how vibrant this place is without quarantine. Hotel de Paris, that's one of the items on our list. All right, let's check out Georgetown. Now we're just wandering the rest of Georgetown here. I went to a very cool place, Niesel and Anderson. The granddaughter of the founder still works in the shop and she started to share a whole bunch more. She said Georgetown has never had a major fire because they have three firehouses. She traveled, said she studied in Sweden. Her shop is very European based. I bought some Icelandic chocolate, for example, but had Swedish goods and German goods and all sorts of stuff. 
She's probably in her 60s, says this is her retirement. And so I asked her if she has any children. She said only her sister has ch two children, but they're not interested in the business. So very cool, quaint town. Where we're going now is going to be one of the highlights, the Georgetown Loop. So the Georgetown Loop is that part of the Colorado Central Railway that was rebuilt. It's the original US-6 before US-6 was built. US-6 was built in the 1930s when everybody wanted cars instead of riding trains. And this is the road we take instead of the historic Georgetown Road. So apparently we should be going underneath the railroad because it has two loops and four bridges with about a thousand elevation change throughout. It was a feat of engineering. It's one of the reasons they rebuilt it was because of how impressive it was for its time. And again, it is a so tourist attraction, so it's a good revenue generator, I'm sure, for these two communities, Georgetown and Silver Plume. Now you can already see we're gaining some good elevation here. So the loop is above the railway. I believe 600 feet off the ground at this point. It does run actively, but with COVID, it's not currently running. I was told that it should start running in the next week. So there's your track there, and then it goes up to the other track. So there she is, the Georgetown Loop. Have to get on the train once it's running. So as we complete our tour of Georgetown, there's two other facts I want to share. One is that it's referred to as the Silver Queen of Colorado due to that silver boom that it helped lead. Leadsville would rival it and ultimately be the winner of the heavier amounts of silver mining. But Georgetown with its location to Denver and Golden was a very pivotal part of that. The other one is that there's a dog, Parker the Snow Dog, that is known as the mayor of Georgetown. So I'm honored as police judge of Georgetown to administer this oath of office to Parker the Snow Dog. Honorary Mayor Oath. I, Parker the Snow Dog, do swear on my stuffed animals that I will give love and hugs to the people and four-legged friends of Georgetown, Colorado when I'm not playing, eating, watching the Broncos, or sleeping, I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties of the Office of Honorary Mayor according to the law and the best of my ability, so help me rough. Parker, please stick out your tongue if you acknowledge. Where's your tongue? <laughs> So I'm not sure uh, kind of the background of that, but what I do know is that Parker's well known around the region in Loveland. So that should give you a glimpse of Georgetown. Now we're heading on to I-70 West for just a few more minutes to get to Silver Plume. Two exits later and you're in Silver Plume, a town of about a hundred. That used to be a couple thousand. Also has Clear Creek running through it, of course. Doesn't really have much roads. I'm not going down that road. We'll have to see if I can come around the other side. You can see it's a little bit more of a non-tourist location. quickly becoming just a pass-through zone. It looks like they're only allowing local traffic through most of the routes. Even this road is not paved. So that's where we're going to wrap it. Here's your creek. I hope you enjoyed another Rocky Mountain Monday. 
please leave a comment if you'd like to see anything specific other region of Colorado or certain facts and tidbits about the locations that I'm going to talk to you all next time take care and we'll see you soon